There is some truth to love being described as electric, as our hearts rely on a complex electrical system to regulate our heartbeats. When things go wrong with our wiring, we call in an electrophysiologist. In order to understand what an arrhythmia is, essentially it's a heart rhythm disturbance. And for the normal heartbeat to take place, there is a seamless measured flow of electricity through the heart. There could be a number of causes. In many cases, there are uh, abnormal feedback loops uh, within the normal cardiac tissue. In some patients, because the heart muscle, for example, has been damaged from a previous heart attack. And then there are congenital forms where people People are born with abnormal or extra connections between certain portions of the heart. There are different forms of rhythm disturbances. Some of them are not necessarily life-threatening, but could really adversely affect your quality of life. And there are other forms of heart rhythm disturbances which could lead one to die suddenly. And in many cases, the ones which are associated with sudden cardiac death will originate from the pumping chambers of the heart because the heart beats very quickly, doesn't have time to fill, and not enough blood reaches the heart, and it becomes a, a vicious cycle and in many cases the patient then passes out or could uh, end up with a rhythm which actually leads to them uh, losing consciousness or dying. So the first procedure we're going to be performing today is on a young lady who's been having irregular palpitations and the diagnosis is something that we call a supraventricular tachycardia and it's really just a, a very rapid palpitation that she has been experiencing despite taking medicines for it. There wasn't much symptoms. The first symptom was just like a heavy feeling on my chest and then some palpitations and as it continued just a like a dizzy feeling and apart from that not much and then I decided to consult the doctor. What we've done is we've managed to access the heart via the patient's groins and a series of very narrow flexible tubes which have got monitors at the tip which are able to sense the electricity in the heart are giving us these signals that we see on the monitors at the moment. The whole idea about electrophysiology in particular is to try and get the cardiac rhythm disturbance going and so I can then understand the nature of it and that will then essentially help you to determine the best course of therapy and treatment for the patient. Patients are usually only given a mild sedative and local anesthetic during this procedure. We were able to get her into her abnormal heart rhythm, which is very rapid, 220, 230 beats a minute. It's interesting because she actually is born with an additional connection between her filling and the pumping chamber of the heart. And she had agreed with me beforehand that if we needed to access the left-hand side of the heart, uh, she would prefer for this to be done under general anesthesia. The second procedure that we're going to be performing today is for a patient who is diagnosed with a condition which is called atrial fibrillation. And this is characterized by a very irregular and very rapid heartbeat. And hopefully by interrupting once again the circuit which is uh, triggering the atrial fibrillation, we are able to, uh, in many cases, improve her quality of life significantly. of years ago when I had now and again spells of dizziness but more heart palpitations and it took me quite a while before I actually went to a doctor and complained about it who then treated me he immediately made a diagnosis and then he started explaining to me the consequences if I do not have the procedure done like the blood not going 100% out of the, the heart every time can cause a, um, a stroke which really scared me Technological advances in this field have made correcting problems of this nature considerably safer and far less invasive. You've seen the three-dimensional models and the mapping systems that we use to be able to work accurately within the heart, you know, up to millimeters of precision. These days it's not necessary for patients to have open heart surgery for many of these procedures. The patient is awake at the moment and hopefully after completion of a successful procedure, she'll be on her way home tomorrow morning. During the procedure, a narrow flexible catheter tube attached to electricity monitoring electrodes is inserted into a blood vessel and wired all the way to the heart. The electrodes gather the information required 
to find the cause of the problem and correct it. It's really phenomenal what we're able to do with the currently available technology. This laboratory itself, technically speaking, certainly is the only one of its kind on the continent of Africa. And because we can work with so much precision and accuracy today, we are able to identify minute and microscopic portions of the circuit which can be eliminated. And in so doing, we can cure the arrhythmia, get the patient off tablets which may have many nasty side effects and improve the patient's quality of life without them ending up with a pacemaker.